Listen close, only 1% of you are going to get this. It's an awful tale. No, it's disturbing. The employee. Reading out of Brain Boxing, page 40. Phoenix nervously adjusted his shirt. He was back at his old workplace. Laid off six days prior, he had to reapply for his own job. It felt absurd. This company, now under state control, had become a bureaucratic nightmare. A $50 fee just to take the test? No guarantee of rehiring? Phoenix sighed. He needed this job, but a part of him longed for something better. The room buzzed with anxious applicants. Some, like Phoenix, were familiar faces. Others were new, hoping for a chance. The air crackled with uncertainty. Phoenix just wanted this whole process over with. He had bills piling up. The rent increase loomed over him. His last paycheck, a measly $215, flashed in his mind. It was a constant reminder of his struggles. Phoenix ran a hand through his hair. He had to stay focused. He needed to ace this interview and get back to work. The sooner the better. His gaze swept across the room, landing on a stern-looking woman behind a desk. Supervisor, his mind supplied. She seemed to radiate authority, her expression unreadable. Next to her, a man with a bored expression shuffled papers. This was it. Phoenix took a deep breath and joined the queue. Next. The woman's voice was sharp, cutting through the murmuring in the room. Phoenix shuffled forward, his heart pounding. He tried to smile, but it felt strained. Name? She asked, not bothering to look up from the form in front of her. Phoenix. Phoenix Miller. The woman, Sam, finally looked at him. Her eyes were sharp, assessing. Shirt size? She asked abruptly. He blinked, caught off guard. Phoenix, excuse me. Sam sighed impatiently. Shirt size. We need to order uniforms. Phoenix hesitated, then mumbled, ha! Ah. Large, I think. Sam stood up, her expression hardening. Stand up straight, she commanded. Phoenix obeyed, feeling his cheeks flush. Sam eyed him critically. That fits fine. No need for a new one. Phoenix felt a surge of anger. What was her problem? He was already on edge, and this woman was treating him like a child. He opened his mouth to retort, but she cut him off. That'll be an additional $25 for the application fee. Sam said, her voice like ice. Phoenix stared at her, incredulous. Phoenix? What? But I already paid, Sam raised an eyebrow. That was for the state processing fee. This is for the company application. Phoenix felt his anger boil over. Phoenix, you sound like the feisty type of supervisor, he muttered, shaking his head. Sam's head snapped up, her eyes narrowed. Excuse me? She said, her voice dangerously low. Before Phoenix could respond, the man next to Sam cleared his throat. Sam, why don't I show the applicants around while you finish up here? Sam hesitated, then nodded curtly. Fine, she said, her gaze lingering on Phoenix for a moment before she turned away. The man smiled at Phoenix apologetically. Sorry about that. I'm Sam's brother, by the way. Name's Todd. Phoenix, Phoenix. Phoenix managed a weak smile. Todd's face lit up. Phoenix, no way. You went to Neary High, right? Phoenix? Yeah. How did you know? Todd grinned. I went to Tri-County. Remember those epic football games? Phoenix couldn't help but smile back. It was strange finding a connection in this tense situation, but as they chatted about old times, Phoenix couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning of a very long day. The applicants shuffled into a cramped break room. The air hung heavy with the smell of stale coffee and nervous energy. Phoenix sat alone, picking at a lukewarm burger. Sam's earlier hostility had left him rattled, he couldn't understand her animosity. Was it something he said, or was it just her way? He glanced around the room. The other applicants seemed equally ill at ease. A young woman with bright pink hair nervously chewed her nails. A muscular man in a stained tank top glared at anyone who made eye contact. Phoenix sighed. This whole experience was shaping up to be a nightmare. He was about to take a bite of his burger when he felt a tap on his shoulder. He turned to find Todd standing beside him, a tray of food in his hands. Mind if I join you? Todd asked, a friendly grin on his face. Phoenix hesitated, unsure if he wanted company, but Todd seemed genuine, a stark contrast to his sister's abrasive demeanor. Phoenix, sure, have a seat, Phoenix mumbled, scooting over on the bench. As they ate, Todd chatted about their old high schools, reminiscing about football games and school dances. 
Phoenix found himself relaxing for the first time that day. Todd was easy to talk to, his cheerful demeanor infectious. But their conversation was interrupted by a loud whisper from across the room. Did you see the way he was looking at her? A gruff voice hissed. Totally disrespectful. Phoenix's head snapped up, his gaze drawn to a group of applicants huddled in the corner. They were whispering amongst themselves, their eyes darting towards Phoenix and Sam, who was now seated at a table by the window. Yeah, and did you hear what he called her? Another voice chimed in. Feisty, can you believe the nerve? Phoenix felt a surge of anger. Were they talking about him? He hadn't meant anything disrespectful by his comment. It was just an observation. He glanced at Sam. She was staring out the window, seemingly oblivious to the whispers circulating the room. But Phoenix noticed the way her jaw clenched, her hand tightening around her coffee mug. He couldn't help but wonder if those whispers were getting to her. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed through the break room. Everyone turned to see the young woman with pink hair scrambling to pick up a stack of papers she'd knocked over. Sam was instantly at her side, helping her gather the scattered sheets. Here, let me help you with that, Sam said, her voice surprisingly gentle. The young woman stammered her thanks, her cheeks flushed with embarrassment. Sam patted her arm reassuringly. It's all right, it happens to the best of us. Phoenix watched the interaction, a knot of confusion forming in his stomach. This was a side of Sam he hadn't seen before. Where was the harsh, unforgiving supervisor from earlier? Could there be more to her than met the eye? He realized Todd was watching him, a knowing look in his eyes. Don't let her tough exterior fool you, Todd said softly. Sam's got a heart of gold, she's just protective. Protective? Phoenix wasn't sure what to make of that. But as he continued to observe Sam, he couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to her story than she was letting on. The image of the grimy hotel room flashed across Phoenix's mind. A wave of shame washed over him as he remembered the chipped paint, the stained carpet, the pervasive smell of mildew that clung to everything. That had been his reality just a few months ago, when a string of bad luck had left him jobless and desperate. He'd sworn he'd never go back to that kind of life, the constant fear of eviction, the shame of relying on handouts from friends and family. Phoenix shuddered pushing the memory to the back of his mind. He couldn't afford to dwell on the past, not now. He had to focus on the present, on getting this job and rebuilding his life. The memory of that Tuesday afternoon was still fresh in Phoenix's mind. $215, that was all he had to show for a week of back-breaking work. He felt trapped in a cycle of poverty. Rent was due, his car insurance was overdue. That Tuesday afternoon had been a turning point for Phoenix. He decided to take control of his destiny, seeking new opportunities. And he found a job that offered him not just a paycheck, but a sense of purpose and security. As Phoenix sat in the break room, surrounded by the anxieties of his fellow applicants, his mind drifted to a different life. He imagined a life where he wasn't constantly struggling, a life where he could afford a comfortable apartment, a reliable car, maybe even a vacation once in a while. He pictured himself coming home from a fulfilling day at work, not drained and defeated, but energized and content. He refused to let his past dictate his future. He was ready for a change. Phoenix glanced at his worn out shoes, a constant reminder of his financial struggles. The responsibility weighed heavily on his shoulders. He was the primary caregiver for his aging grandmother. Her health was declining and the medical bills were piling up. He couldn't bear the thought of letting her down. He spent countless nights worrying about her medication and doctor's appointments. He had promised his late mother he would take care of grandma. This job was a lifeline, a chance to keep his head above water, to provide for his grandmother and maintain a roof over their heads. The thought of failing fueled his determination. He had to succeed, not just for himself, but for her. Phoenix thought back to a conversation with his friend Todd. They discussed their dead-end jobs, feeling trapped in a system designed to keep them down. It's like they're shooting bullets at our feet saying, jump dance, Todd had exclaimed, frustrated. And we're just supposed to smile and pretend. Phoenix nodded, feeling the weight of Todd's words. Employers expected them to be grateful for long hours and little pay, sacrificing well-being for the company's bottom line. The memory fueled Phoenix's anger. He was tired of jumping through hoops, proving his worth to people who didn't value him. 
He felt like a cog in a machine. He craved respect, purpose, a chance to use his skills. Finding such a job wouldn't be easy, but he refused to give up hope. He believed a job awaited him, one that would allow him to thrive. He just had to keep searching, keep believing in a brighter future. He was done doing cartwheels in the rain. He was ready to dance to his own beat. The lunch break ended with the sharp ring of a bell, jerking Phoenix back to the reality of his situation. Come on, man, let's show them what we're made of. Todd, ever the optimist, clapped Phoenix on the shoulder. All right, everyone, listen up. This is the simulator line. We'll be testing your aptitude for various tasks. Phoenix recognized the machines. He had spent countless hours operating them during his previous stint at the factory. Sam paired Phoenix with Todd on the simulator line, a small mercy in an otherwise stressful situation. You need to slow down. You're making the rest of us look bad. Phoenix stared at him, confused. Don't play dumb. I saw you sucking up to the supervisor's brother in the break room. Trying to score brownie points, are we? Phoenix felt a surge of anger. Narrator as Phoenix. That's none of your business. And for your information, Todd and I go way back. Just watch yourself. This is my job you're messing with. Is there a problem here? No problem here, ma'am. Just helping my buddy Phoenix here get the hang of things. Is that right, Phoenix? Everything's fine, Sam. Just a little misunderstanding. We've got it covered. As the day wore on, Phoenix couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. What's the deal with Spencer? Why is he riding me so hard? Don't take it personally, man. Spencer's just insecure. He's been out of work for a while and he sees you as competition. Competition? But we're all in the same boat here. We just want to get hired. I know, but that's not how Spencer sees it. He's got it in his head that there are only a limited number of positions available, and he's determined to get one, even if it means sabotaging the rest of us. The final hour of the reapplication process involved a group orientation, led by none other than Sam. Phoenix couldn't help but feel like he was back in school, sitting at a too small desk, listening to a lecture he'd heard a dozen times before. He tried to focus on Sam's words, but his mind kept replaying the events of the day, the confrontation with Spencer, the whispers in the break room, the weight of his financial worries. As Sam droned on about company policies and procedures, Phoenix noticed that her gaze kept lingering on him, her expression unreadable. The orientation finally ended, and a wave of exhaustion washed over Phoenix. The orientation finally wrapped up. Phoenix, could you give Carla a ride home? Her car wouldn't start, and I need to lock up. Phoenix hesitated, surprised by the request. Why him? They hadn't exactly gotten off on the right foot. Please, I don't want to call my ex. He, he scares me. Something in her voice, a tremor of genuine fear, broke through Phoenix's apprehension. Phoenix, sure, no problem. The drive to Carla's apartment was short and tense. Thank you. For everything. For not believing those lies about you. Phoenix lies? Spencer. He was saying all kinds of awful things about you, trying to get you in trouble with Sam. Phoenix felt a surge of anger, so Spencer had been bad-mouthing him behind his back. What a snake. The other employees had a plan. They tricked Phoenix into slipping into the compactor. Phoenix never made it out. Pause how it happened, from Phoenix's perspective. 5S. Without hesitation, Phoenix jumped out of the car and raced towards the commotion. We need something to wedge the door open. Hurry! Phoenix pushed his way through the crowd. He could see Sam struggling to keep the heavy metal door of the dumpster ajar. There's a cat stuck inside. It must have gotten trapped when they emptied the bins. Phoenix immediately understood the urgency of the situation. He scanned the area, searching for something, anything that could help. Sam and Todd worked together, their previous conflicts forgotten in the face of this shared crisis. I've got you. It's okay, little guy. We're going to get you out of here. She managed to grab hold of the cat, a small, scrawny thing with matted fur, and gently pull it free. You're safe now. You're safe. It was awful, the scene that unfolded, a strange mix of emotions swirling inside him. He, Phoenix, had just blindly sacrificed his own life to save a cat, a creature he didn't even know.
The cheers and applause for the rescued cat faded. Thanks to Fionix's help back there, but at what cost? It was a gruesome scene. Sam happened to be at the trash compactor waiting. As she opened the dumpster, Spencer reached over, passing a huge wooden log. Was team effort. We're where all at fault. She, Sam, even took off her shoes for balance, gaining leverage. Encouraging Carla to participate. The rest of the group egging her on. Carla didn't seem interested, though, not because she felt bad for Phoenix. No, honestly, she seems more enthused in that cat. By the time Todd got there, the alarm system tripped off. Phoenix quickly left his station, dashing towards the back entrance, watching the others wrestle that huge wooden log, screaming, help, help. Not exactly sure what to make of it, Phoenix attempt to get involved, heeding to the group's chant, there's a cat stuck inside the dumpster. Help us get it out, as Phoenix leaped inside the iron compactor, getting the stray cat out. Till it downed on him, they locked the door shut. Driving home that evening, the setting sun painting the sky in hues of orange and purple, Todd let out a tired sigh. It had been a long, emotionally draining day, full of ups and downs that left him feeling like he'd run a marathon. He thought back to his conversation with Phoenix weeks earlier, their shared frustration at the cartwheels in the rain they were expected to perform for their employers. Phoenix said had felt a bit like that, a series of hoops to jump through, of obstacles to overcome just for the chance to earn a living. But amidst the frustration, there had been moments of iniquity, of human malice, greed, that transcended the competition and anxiety of the reapplication process. It's important to remember that no one should face violence. If you or someone you know is experiencing workplace violence, then good luck. Don't go to HR. They might kill you and get away with it. Ask Phoenix. All of Thea's short stories can be found on my YouTube channel, Rodney's Publishing. Subscribe and share if you like.